Hey, what's up? My name is Han, and I make design videos here on YouTube as well as things about just life and stuff and, and yeah. Anyways, today's video has been highly requested by folks who are looking to transition their career path into UX product design um, or simply just, you know, looking for an alternate path or route to university or college or on how do I become a product designer or UX designer with no experience? If you're interested in hearing how to do that, stay tuned. So you decided you want to become a product designer, but you have no experience. Where do you start? Well, here's a newsflash. Uh, something that we um, designers like to tout a lot is, you know, having a design process. And what is your design thinking? And the first step in design thinking is understanding or research. So what that means is you are going to research the crap out of this profession. When I say research, I mean real research. Research on the demand in your city, wherever you are. Can you actually find a job if you go into this career path? Or are you willing to move to where there are a concentration of these jobs available? Or in cities that have higher demand for product designers, tech, UX designers? Um, and make sure that there's a demand there because we do this to pay the bills. I mean, we all love it, but at the end of the day, it is a career, it is a job, and so make sure that the demand is there where you're living or if you're willing to move for it. There is uh, the argument that there are emerging remote jobs now, but that comes with a whole cluster of things to work through and not something that I would recommend as someone with no experience just starting out um, it's really tough to get that mentorship and learning without having a physical team. My perspective. Uh, my Another thing I would recommend doing is talking to product designers or UX designers that are either within your area or if you can reach out to them on Twitter, Instagram. You essentially, just talk to as many designers as you can to see what their process was like getting into the industry, uh, what their schooling is like, what their salaries if they're willing to share with you are like because uh, I think there's a misconception that you know you will get paid X amount um, as a UX designer but in reality there is such a range and this is very dependent on what your experience is and you know if you have transferable experience from another industry um, that might count towards years of experience let's say um, and so making sure that you do that homework to see what this person or this designer is making on based on how much experience they have and um, what their career path was what their their progression was into the industry and what it is currently in the industry i.e. did they start off as a junior and then auto magically get a lead position because someone left in their company and so now they're in that position but they didn't really spend that much time being sort of on the production side of things. Um, so the little details like that I think is important to gather context on whether this is a good fit for you. If you'd like to learn more about my personal experience into product design, I have a video which I will link somewhere on the screen. Something will come out. I think another really important question to ask any designer that you can um, talk to or meet with is what do they like about their job? And so like what excites them? What makes them jump out of bed in the morning and want to go to work? And see if it aligns with your values. And then on the flip side, what they dread about their job and if that aligns with what you are able to sort of put up with or conquer or you know build skills towards because um, this is very definitive in sort of your decision to make it or to you know pursue product design UX design and just do that homework to see if your values are actually aligned to what the job what the career entails uh, again there is a range and depending on what industry you end up working in then it varies um, and who knows you might meet some very miserable miserable people or some really happy-go-lucky designers 
Okay, so once you have done your research and you've really thoroughly taken a look at sort of yourself, your skills, where your strengths lie, what is uh, considered to be crucial to being a designer, um, and there's a lot of demand in your city, the next step is to consider um, you know, some type of formal education. And by formal education, uh, I think it really runs the gamut on what your time, uh, what your budget is, and uh, how much flexibility you have in being able to pursue this. And uh, what I mean by that is there are degrees now, so university degrees, that will uh, teach you the fundamentals of design, especially when it comes to product design, UX design, and um, there's mixed programs as well where there's a few, I think, I believe there's in Toronto at least, there's a college, university program that is a uh, four year, so you do two years of more applied technical training and then another two years of um, theory and I believe there is some co-op in there as well. Uh, there's also things like boot camps and boot camps are hugely popular now and those also run from I believe anywhere from 12 weeks to six months to maybe a year uh, definitely on the pricier side and again that is really dependent on each individual situation and something that I think um, is not as popular or maybe I haven't necessarily heard of a lot of people pursuing this particular path is a uh, do it yourself. And what I mean by do it yourself is sort of just cherry picking items and things that skills that you need to build in your designer toolbox uh, to become a successful designer. And what, I, and what I mean by that are there are lots of, I think, free programs, especially um, online. So things like Skillshare, Linda, um, there I'm probably missing a few other ones, but uh, they give you sort of the basic knowledge or the basic learnings of the design process, what it entails, um, what steps you would be able to execute under each um, step in the process. So for instance, for example, in research, you know, what are all the things that you can do within research to really solidify um, the understanding of a problem? A lot of people default to user interviews or usability testing, but there's just actually so much more. And so if you took a course in just user research in and of itself, then that's sort of one slice of the design process that yet you'd be able to learn that wasn't part of a comprehensive program. And so I think the DIY route might be a little bit longer, but a bit more flexible for folks who are already in a job or they are already currently, uh, you know, well into their career and looking for a career move. You can sort of do this on the side, kind of like after work, um, during lunch, you can take these courses and learn more about the design process as well as tools and, um, you know, types of documentation that you need to learn to become successful at design. So I think the caveat here when choosing your education, whether it's, again, formal education, a boot camp, or uh, just some DIY courses that you sort of like piece together, there's no real guarantee that any of those paths are actually going to land you a job. I think, again, in my perspective, in my, in my perspective, it feels like maybe the formal education route is going to get you those credentials that will get you through and get you in the door. But to be honest, those courses are quite new and the applications that we're seeing that are coming in are mostly from boot camps. So um, boot camps do offer a comprehensive but also very condensed curriculum for those who are looking to transition or looking for a uh, quick intro into design and design practices and theories. So again, no guarantee of any of those paths that are gonna get you a design job, um, but definitely different lens in which you can learn design through. All right, so now that you have, let's say, you know, research about researched about the position, researched about the industry, researched about the career, and you've gotten, uh, let's say even not formal education, but you know, you've done some courses on some design tools and you think you understand, you kind of have a grasp of the design thinking, design process, 
it's time to now try your hand at the thing. And what I mean by that is, you know, it's not as formal as you might think in terms of, you know, someone needs to give you a problem set. No, actually design is about solving problems. And so if you have a current problem with one of the ways that a favorite app of yours is working now and uh, you start researching different solutions and write up about it or critique about it and just start practicing that muscle and flexing that muscle of being able to understand problems and proposing solutions for them. Now, if you are confident in using your newfound skills at Sketch or Figma, uh, then you can maybe do some mock-ups or some wireframes and just getting familiar with making screens and making designs so that you can start building out or start working towards building out a portfolio. There are some really great resources out there in terms of, you know, design prompts. I know there's something called UI Daily that you can... There's something called UI Daily, I believe, that sends you design prompts and then you can um, sort of design a screen that matches what they prompt you to design. Uh, there's also something called... Uh, I Again, I'll link them below, but it's a challenge essentially every three weeks or six weeks, they open a new challenge for you to design um, some type of app. And um, it's pretty fun because then you can just remember it. not to just keep your designs or your critiques or your examples or your work to yourself because in the real, real, real world, meaning, you know, at um, a company, you rarely keep design secret. You actually can't because you got to build it with your team. And so you have to socialize. And what I mean by socialize is you have to talk about your work to other people. So if this at first is your partner, your friend, um, so be it. You need to learn to flex the muscle of showing someone your work, talk through why you designed a certain thing the way you did or what solutions you came up with and why you decided those solutions as opposed to other ones. And then I also encourage you to find like-minded people. So if you can go to meetups, um, you can go to um, boot camp, open houses, you can you know join design communities and make informal meetups so that you can find some people who are in the same shoes as you and you can keep each other accountable and help each other progress towards your first job or you know building out your portfolio so that you can start applying to jobs. Those are my tips. So first research the crap out of this industry and see if it's aligned to your goals in life, your values, your passions, your principles, everything to see if it aligns with yourself. Then the second is to pursue some sort of training or formal education on the topic. And then the third is to start doing the thing. Start designing, start sketching, start whiteboarding and drawing different flows out um, and taking a little bit more of a critical look at apps and how they are designed and write about it, create content around it, uh, exactly what I'm doing right here. Um, do that and then socialize it, share with friends, share with family and get feedback on your work and then Iterate. So basically what that means is once you have that feedback, go back and refine it and make sure to document that process because then you can put it in your portfolio. If, let me know down below if you are currently watching this and you are a designer. Give me a thumbs up emoji in the comments. And if you are sort of just researching, so maybe like the thinking one is going to be if you're still thinking about it, you're interested, and this is actually a form of your research right now, is um, learning on what steps to take. So put down either of those emojis or just another random emoji if you don't fit into either of those buckets. Well, I don't know. Anyways, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.